Upstart, a cloud-based AI machine learning software that is going to aggregate consumer data to accurately identify risk and approve more applicants than traditional lending-based solutions. Should you invest in Upstart? That's exactly what we're going to talk about today. Hey guys, Corey here and welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time, be sure to subscribe and tap that bell so you know when I post new videos. And if you want to give me a thumbs up, it's greatly appreciated and it helps the channel grow. If you guys have any questions, recommendations on stocks you want me to take a look at or you want to let me know how you're doing or you have any questions overall put them in the comments below and not only that if you want to support the channel and join the exclusive membership here with invest with Corey, you can do so right below this video there's a heart there you can become an exclusive member of the channel at any time also if you guys want to join my weekly newsletter which will give you weekly updates tips and strategies and how to become a better investor and trader you can sign up in the information box below the link will be there to directly go there it's 100 free and not only that i'm also going to give you guys a bunch of different recommendations every week and help you become a better trader and investor. So Upstart is a cloud-based AI machine learning software program in order to link lenders with consumers and to aggregate consumer demands for loans. It connects it to the company's network of AI-enabled bank partners to accurately identify risk and to approve more applicants than traditional credit score-based lending models. Wall Street expects a negative 38 cent EPS this quarter, which is up a great amount from quarter one 2023, negative dollar 58 EPS. Wall Street expects the revenue to be $24.8 million, which is up 21% from quarter one 2023. And the Zacks rank, which goes from strong sell to sell to hold to buy to strong buy, ranks upstart as a hold. Analysts have become bearish on the prospects of earnings on Upstart recently. The earnings ESP is negative 1.56%. However, Upstart has beaten three out of the last four earnings calls. The previous quarter was an estimate EPS of negative 15 cents a share. However, it was only negative 11 cents a share, which was a 26% surprise. As of April 24th, 2024, Upstart had lost 13.7% on the stock market and their stock price versus the tech sector and computer sectors loss of 5.13% and the S&P 500 at a loss of 3%. Zach's estimate is a negative 47 cents per share EPS estimate for the year and an estimate of $588.47 million total revenue, which that estimate means the EPS will be up plus 16% for the year and the total revenue will be up 14.59% from the previous year, going in the right direction for Upstart. So the issue here is they're not profitable yet, but they're working their way in the right direction. See, there's more that goes into a stock than just whether or not a company's profitable right now. It's the forward-looking statements and what sector they're in. What do they offer? Do they have good management, good CEO? The list of things goes on and on. However, Upstart is definitely improving year over year. Every quarter, they're delivering better results financially. However, their products are in the AI sector, and AI isn't going away. It's only getting better. The only issue they're going to have is, even though they're in a very good and strong sector, because AI is not going away, are they going to be able to keep up with the AI advancements? I believe they will. And the typical bank lending model based on credit scores is kind of bad. It's not really that accurate. There's a lot of people that have a low credit score, but are trying to build their credit and have the ability to make payments, yet they're not approved for certain loans based off of credit score alone. However, a machine and computer learning AI cloud-based software like Upstart could approve more people for loans and more accurately based off of AI and machine learning. This is going to be something I believe in the future that's going to drive stock prices up significantly. Upstart is pretty much like Hims or Tesla. Sure, Tesla is a car company, an EV car company, and Hims is pharmaceuticals and consumer durables. However, Hims is driven by MedMatch, which is AI machine computer learning, cloud-based solution connecting consumers to prescriptions and providers, whereas Upstart connects lenders to consumers using the same type of AI machine learning technology. I'm not saying they're identical AI, but they're similar as for an example that I'm giving you on what they do, as well as Tesla not just being an EV automotive 
manufacturer. They're a data hub, an FSD, full self-driving hub, machine learning AI, and fully self-AI aware automated driving. Like they don't have to program scripts in their car anymore. This new version is completely all AI and it's much more cost effective for the company. So while Tesla seems like you're just buying an EV stock, you're actually buying an FSD stock, an AI, and a data hub stock. With Hims, you're buying into the future of medicine and prescription and AI and a data hub as well. With Upstart, you're buying into the same thing, a data hub, AI machine-driven learning cloud-based solution because medical, pharmaceuticals, EV, AI, as well as money and lending isn't going away. So Upstart is to the lending and bank and finance sector the same way that Hims is to the pharmaceuticals and, of course, Tesla is to the EV sector. I believe Upstart just needs to manage their money better, get more sales, and of course, these are very easy things to say and a lot harder to do, but I believe that Upstart is the perfect business model for a successful company and their year-over-year -year growth dictates that they are working in the right direction. Let's take a look at the fundamentals, technicals, and financials and show you how to get into Upstart and how you can make back money on Upstart quickly so that you can offset losses and or you can get in, sell covered calls, and basically recoup the money you spent getting in so you can get the stock virtually for free. I just want to point out that I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. I'm just here to help you guys understand technicals, fundamentals, financials, and help build your knowledge in strategy so you guys can become more profitable. However, it's ultimately up to you to decide which stocks to get into and how much of a position size to take in that stock because ultimately it's your money. Okay, so we're looking here at the income statement, total revenue for upstart. You can see it goes from 228 million dips down to 102 and back to 140 so they've hit a snag somewhere at the beginning of 2023 but now things seem to be going in the right direction for total revenue gross profits 224 million all the way up to 134 million again in line with total revenue so that's good but their operating income is down it's not good at all negative 32 million it went even worse into negative 131 million but now they're back up to negative 47 million their operating expenses and operating income are not in line they have too many expenses Expenses. I'm not exactly sure what their expenses are, but they have to manage their cash flow a little bit better. Pre-tax income negative 29 million. Right now they're at negative 42 million, but up from the negative 129 in quarter one 2023. So over the last year, significant improvement. If we come down to net income, quarter one 23 negative 129 million. Now they're back up to negative 42 million. So again, an improvement. Their EBITDA was negative 125. Now they're up to negative 38. So they're definitely over the last year a drastic improvement. Something happened at the end of 2022, which I think I'm going to put partially on the blame due to the inflation deflation of the market from 2021 to 2022. The market recovered in 23 and Upstart also recovered. Let's take a look at my favorite cash flow. So cash flow from operating activities in quarter one, 23, negative 75 million down to negative 143 million. Cash from investing activities was at negative 25 million. Now it's negative 29 million. Not much of a drastic change, but it's still going down. Cash from financing activities, 20 million to 26 million. That's an improvement, but less than the previous quarter. Free cash flow goes from negative 76 million to negative 143 million. So while their total revenue and profits, gross profits are better, the cash flow is not, which means they're owed money. They're not getting paid. They have debt that they're paying out, but they're not getting paid for what they're owed. The cash flow situation isn't good. And I'm not exactly sure why. They've purchased businesses or assets or expanded their business here. Uh, they have capital expenditures on fixed assets and they also have investing cash flows that have come in from other sources to help offset that but they've bought into other businesses they spent 17 million dollars acquiring another business or another asset of some sort which I haven't looked at their full detailed balance sheet to find out you know or their sec filings I haven't looked at those yet to figure out what that is but they've purchased assets right here have sold preferred stock to generate 160 million but they've also paid off long-term debt which is good so they've sold some of their preferred stock to pay off some of their debt. That's good. That, that's a good thing. To sell some preferred stock and then to go ahead and use that income to pay off debt is very good. And their total investing cash flow is $26 million in the positive. So that's a good sign in one area of cash flow. However, their operational activities and investing activities, not so good. So I have a put that I sold at Upstart for $364. I've actually collected more money than that because I've sold it you know, multiple times leading up to this earning. So if I get assigned at $2,300, my break even is actually $1,900. $40 or $19.40 per share. And I also received other credits of juicy premiums
him selling puts. So my break even right now is probably about $18 a share. So I have no worries. Now, if Upstart looks like after earnings, they're going up to $25 or $26, I'm going to bring this all the way back to May 10th from the 24th. And I'm going to bring it up to a $24 put. What's going to end up happening is I'm going to bring it from the 24th to this Friday the 10th and go up to 24, collect $22 premium, and I probably still won't get assigned. I'm going to make that determination if I see that the stock price goes up after earnings and stays in the $24 to $25 range. I may even go up to $24.50 or $25 to collect another $80 and get assigned at $25 because even at that particular strike price of $25, my break even is going to go up to $21. So I'm still $400 in the positive even if I get assigned. If the stock price stays above $23 or $24, I'm going to bring back my put. I'm going to roll it closer and up for more juicy premium. We're going to go ahead and trade options on Upstart. Click sell, click put, May 10th of this week. I recommend selling a $23 put if you want to get in or maybe a $22.50 or even a $22. It's just going to depend. I really think $22 is the safe bet or even $21 if you really want to be safe. I wouldn't mind buying Upstart at $23 where you can collect $200 juicy premium, but if you go to $22, you can collect $150. If you want to go down and be safe and go to $21, you'll collect $111. Heck, you can even go to $20 and collect $80. Because you're getting the stock and this isn't a credit spread and it's safer, I would recommend a $21 put, but a $20 is much safer. So it's up to you to decide if you want to go at 20 or 21. 19 is super safe with a delta of 14, but you can still collect $50 juicy premium. So I recommend 19 or 20 to be safe. If you want to be more aggressive, you can sell a 21 or a 22. However, just to go in between all of that, we'll do a $20 put for $80. We'll click continue. We could probably get 81 or 82. So we'll look at a nice $80 juicy premium, which is a pretty good return on an investment. That's an 8% return in five days. That is really good. It's really safe because if Upstart was to tank down to $21 and you didn't want to get assigned, let me show you how you can roll this position out and down. I already showed you how to roll closer and up to make more premium if the stock goes up in price and so that you can get assigned and collect more premium while doing so. But what if the stock goes down and you don't want to get assigned and you still want to collect more premium? You roll out and down. Let's say you're going to get assigned and you don't want to get assigned at $21 this coming Friday and you want to roll out but keep your strike the same because you believe it's going to rebound and go above your strike price. You don't have to roll down. You can just roll out to give you more time. If I do that and I roll out a few weeks for my $23 put, I'll collect about another $20 premium, maybe more like 30 or 40 because of the asking price. So I can go out three weeks, collect uh, probably 280 minus 230. I'll collect about $50 for three more weeks, giving the stock price more time to go back up above my strike price of the put. So if you guys, so if you guys have the $21 put and you want to roll out two weeks, but keep the strike price the same, you'll collect more juicy premium. And then you'll just wait for the stock to go above your strike price of $21. If you were to sell a $21 put, you'll collect $132. If you sell a 20, you'll collect 82. So $82 on the $20 put. If you roll out to the 17, you'll collect 13 more dollars. So you can roll out for about 15. You probably get 15 more dollars for it because the bid and ask is pretty wide. So let's just say 15 to keep it flat and even. You guys can roll out another week and collect another $15 premium, or you can roll out two more weeks and drop to $19 here and keep the same premium. So you can break even, but go out two more weeks and down another dollar. This way you don't get assigned. You can really play with rolling the options. It's a really good strategy, but we want to get assigned because this is a stock we believe in. You should never sell puts on a stock you don't want or you don't believe in because it makes rolling more difficult. So let's say that you sell a put for $20 and you collect the $80 juicy premium, then you get assigned at $20. Let me show you how you can make back a big portion, if not all of the money you've spent on the stock. Even if the stock goes to $16 and you get assigned at 20, you collected the $82 juicy premium, so your break even is actually $19.18, but you're still $4.18, hypothetically short on the stock now because it went down to say $15. But let me show you why none of this matters because because you can make all the money back selling covered calls. So if we look right here, we see that we can't count this week because the volatility we can see is 233% because of earnings, but next week it drops to 150% and normally it sits around 100%, maybe a little higher. So wherever the stock price is, if we go out at least a dollar on the strike price, normally it's about 20 to $30 on a covered call. If we go out to May 24th, we will see that $26 is worth 226. So we can see weekly it's about 15 to $20, depending on the bid and ask spread and the volatility. If we play it really safe, 25 to 30. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how you can make back your money. So you go ahead and you sell a 
$20 put and you collect $82. Let's say the stock price goes down to 15 and you get assigned. So now you get assigned. The stock price is only worth $15, but you're getting assigned for 20. So that's a $500 difference minus 82, which is $418. So this is the amount of money we have to at least collect so we can break even if the stock price doesn't go up. You can make about $20 on a covered call per week or 20 25, but we're going to say, you know, 25 just to be average and safe. Covered calls, we're going to do those weekly at $25 times four weeks equals $100 a month. If we do this for 10 months, let's say $100 times 10 months equals $1,000. So now we are into the stock for $1,918. $1,918 minus $1,000 means we're only into the stock for $918. If we're only into the stock for $918, even if the stock price stays the same at $15, we are still $600 in the positive after 10 months. If the stock price recovers and goes to $20 or higher, then we are in to the position for only $9 a share. And we can achieve this by selling covered calls even if the covered calls were only $15 a week which would be $10 a week less $40 a month less 400 a year less this thousand would still be worth 600 so we still would only be in to upstart for $1,318 we would still be in the positive this is how we play it safe long term so even if that was the case we would be into the stock for $1,318 and if the stock stayed the same at 1500 we are still in the positive 182 dollars so 182 dollars profit in the positive after 10 months and that is collecting the least amount of premium and if the stock doesn't recover this is kind of a neutral to bearish scenario and we're still profiting if the stock goes up and we make the thousand dollars in 10 months selling good juicy premium on the covered calls then we're realistically going to be 1100 to 1500 dollars in the positive after 10 months this is why selling covered calls and selling cash secured puts is the safest and best way to get in and out or to get in and to stay in the stocks and recoup most if not all of our investments with juicy premium ultimately giving us the stock for a huge discount and potentially even for free can upstart deliver and meet or beat the upcoming's earnings estimate well i believe they will zach's believe they will as well as the analysts that are looking at the stock and watching it on wall street everyone believes they're going to beat the estimate they've beaten three out of the last four estimates and they're in a sector with with a lot of growth. They're gonna be matching consumers to lenders and aggregating data better than any traditional score-based system of the past. They are a data hub, AI machine-driven computer learning software for better consumer matching to lenders, very similar to Hims and Tesla. And this is the way of the future. So as long as Upstart can keep growing year over year and become profitable and keep driving in the direction that they're currently going, then Upstart is definitely definitely a stock to hold, buy, and maybe even strongly buy in the coming quarters. If they can meet or beat this estimate and do a good job on the following three quarters this year, if they can provide a good earnings beat this quarter and continue that trend throughout the year, then without a doubt, Upstart is another one of those stocks you don't want to miss out on. Thanks so much, guys, for being here. Appreciate you. If you enjoyed the channel, subscribe and tap the bell so you know when I post new videos and give me a thumbs up as it greatly helps the channel grow. You can join the newsletter that's free and it's right there in the information box below free newsletter join right now to get weekly updates tips and strategies so i can help coach you guys and teach you how to become a better investor and trader to become more profitable as well as safer strategies you guys can also become an exclusive member of invest with Corey right below this video there's a heart there at any time support the channel by becoming an exclusive member with benefits and perks we'll see you guys in the next upload but until then remember let's grow our wealth together. Take care, guys.